I'm with the U.S. Territorial Battalion. We're an umbrella organization that provides educational uh, reenactment opportunities and living history opportunities for colleges and other educational programs. And I uh, have the fortune of working with the 2nd Colorado as well as the 2nd Volunteer Garrison in Oklahoma State, as well as several uh, other smaller programs uh, that are developing across the Southwest. Uh, this is the 150th uh, anniversary of the American Civil War. Uh, it is a very important mark because um, as we march through the 20 teens, we are also marching chronologically through the, uh, through the 1860s. So the year 2011 is 150 years to the day from the year 1861. So it's pretty easy for you to keep track of where you're at in the anniversary of the Civil War by looking at your calendar at home. Uh, that makes uh, the 150th one of those uh, anniversaries that's uh, fun to teach and it's, it's easy for, uh, to translate to children with such a nice round number of 150 years back. It also makes it possible for historians to kind of put a pin in the date line and say, you know, 150 years ago from today was the Civil War and what has happened in this country since that point to today in those 150 years. So it's an important an anniversary. And so events like the one we're at tonight, which is a, uh, which is a charity uh, blue-gray uh, Civil War ball to raise money for the Student Association here at the University, uh, uh, just celebrate that and they raise awareness uh, amongst the public about this important anniversary about the American Civil War. Uh, the American Civil War changed America more than any other one event in American history. But before the American Civil War, people said uh, the P United States of America are as in plural, as in many states. After the Civil War, people said the United States of America is, as in one nation. And right or wrong, regardless of all the things that brought us into the war, at the end, when we came out, we were one country. We were all Americans, blue and gray, and black and white, we were all free. For better or for worse, we all had to move together through a very, very big growing pain. And I don't think Americans should be ashamed of their civil war. I think they should be proud of it. As you look across the history of the world, every great nation has had one. Some have had two or three. And most of them have been for very petty reasons. Who was going to be the king? Or what religion are we going to practice in this century? Or, you know, various ideals that are very basic and very menial and very primitive. The American Civil War was it's fought for ideals on both sides. States' rights. Uh, how far can the federal government go? What is the meaning of freedom? What does equality for all people really mean in America? These were big issues that were being talked about in newspapers and pamphlets. People were talking about this around their kitchen tables and around their fireplaces. And that makes it a pivotal moment in American history, a moment when we were deciding who we were going to be and what we believed as a people. And we took a lot of beliefs out of the Civil War, from both sides, Confederate and Union. The Union brought us to a closer belief of true equality amongst men and women of all colors, creeds, and religions. The Confederacy showed us that a people native to their homeland, when threatened, regardless of the cause, will fight to the tooth and nail, to the bitter end, against great odds. And it reaffirmed to all of us that there is nothing mightier than an American who stands up for what he believes in. Those legacies both still ring true in modern America. And that's why we should always take time, regardless of the anniversary, 150, 151, 172. We should always take the time to remember this pivotal moment in American history and what it's done for our great country.
My name is Sergeant Colin Jefferson. I am a sergeant in the Union Infantry Regiment. Uh, as second sergeant of my company, I end up on the left end of the line, for our company is on the left end of the line of the regiment. I serve in the file closers, which means that I fill the holes when soldiers go down, and I also am trained in training all my troops how to perform drill. And um, I've been doing this reenacting for about three years, and so far I've seen action in many different kinds of battles. I've been in artillery barrages, I've done trench assaults, uh, trench defenses, as well as field battles. Um, I fight with an 1853 infield rifle musket. Um, currently I'm wearing my dress uniform as we're at the ball. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Private Robert Rogers, and uh, my role is pretty much follow the orders of the officer. And I could have any uh, duties from like canteen detail and camp for getting firewood, anything that they tell me to do. And uh, pretty much, I'm just a common soldier. And um, I've been doing this highway for about 15 years. My job with the 2nd Colorado is um, I'm usually the, the company cook and I cook for 30 to 40 men at a time. I usually cook about five to six meals and I'll, I'll set up a, my wall tent and I'll go and, uh, and cook their meals. Uh, I usually make uh, beef stew and, and, and beans and, and ham and eggs in the morning uh, and beef stew and beans uh, for the lunchtime and then I also sew their buttons and I'm also a field nurse uh, at times also. I enjoy reenacting. I love history. I also volunteer at the Oklahoma History Center in Oklahoma City. Uh, I love history and I love the Civil War era. It is a very expensive hobby though as far as being a woman on that side as far as all the attire we have to wear uh, and we are limited to our duties since the men get out and fight and us women have to stay in the camp. But it is very, very enjoyable. We learn how to you know, work, live camp life and, and, and cook that way also. But it is one thing about it is the, the long trips, the uh, and uh, and the expense as far as the uh, attire. If you don't know how to sew, then you have to buy all your things, and that's where the expense is. I'm Brett Ross. I'm the captain of the Second Colorado Volunteer Infantry Reenactment Group. Um, we get called, we get asked all the time why we do reenacting, and the it, it varies from person to person. I personally got into it because I've always had a love of the Civil War. Um, I'm about 40 years old. I've been, I've been studying the Civil War since I was about 12. And uh, it's always fascinated me. Um, and I, I firmly believe that, that the things that we do create history. Um, it, it can be personal history, it can be a community history, it can be a state history, whatever. Um, and I also believe that if you don't learn history, you're, you're, you're doomed to create the same mistakes that you did in the past. And as a reenactor, I can, I can go out to any number of, of reenactments. I can go to a school and I can talk to kids and I can sh tell people, this is, this is what happened. This is what, what we were fighting for. This is what the, the Confederates were fighting for. Um, it, it, when you see a, a little kid that comes up and starts asking you questions and his eyes light up because you're talking to him and you're talking to him about something that he's never seen before, it's something special. Um, kids, adults, it, it doesn't matter the, the age group, um, they tend to learn something. It, it may be something very trivial, it could be something very important from us because we as reenactors bring it to life. We bring it to them. Um, instead of just reading it in a book, they're actually seeing real life people that are walking around that are um, teaching them the things that their ancestors did 150 years ago. Um, I'm in a unique spot at this particular point because um, both sides of my family, this I am the convergence. Uh, my mother's side of the family were, were, were Union, my father's side were Confederate. Um, and it all led up to me. So I'm a little bit of one side and a little bit of the other. And you know, it proves that you know things can heal. Um, what they fought over, 
will vary from individual to individual, uh, but we're here to show that wounds do heal. We're here to teach people that this was a very bad time for the United States. Um, it's the only war that has had more Americans killed because every single one, every single person that died was an American. Confederate or Union, they were all Americans. Um, and, and I like to think that I am showing what my ancestors did um, on both sides. Uh, it just so happens that I happen to be a, a Southern boy that, you know, is in, in, the, in the blue. And there were, there were men on both sides. There were, there were guys that, that, that were from the North that fought for the South and guys from the South that fought for the North. And I'm an example of that. Um, and it's great, you know, the things that we teach people, you, you can't get it any other way. This is the only way for, for you know, kids to really be interested. Um, and it makes people feel good. Surely the issues of states' rights can be solved, uh, you know, short of, short of violence, short of, you know, bloodshed and the genocide of the American people. Uh, North or South, you know, we share, we share the same heritage. Uh, you know, your Washington is my Washington. Uh, surely, you know, some compromise will be found. There, there, are, there are good men still left in Washington. You know, do not let, you know, the passions of the moment, I don't think, should rule uh, calm thought and manner when considering uh, such a dangerous proposition of secession. I mean, is it even legal? Um, there are those down south who seem to think it is. So, uh, if you look back toward the uh, Mexican War, there are in New England who wanted to secede from the Union because of that. Well, that's true. It's very true. Uh, as far as uh, whether or not we'll have bloodshed out of this disagreement, uh, and proud people, I think they may, they may fight. These are election year rantings. Please, gentlemen, let's be logical. These, these Republicans, as they call themselves, you know, merely reformat, you know, reformulated and reconstituted Whigs, beating the drum of abolition because it, it takes their boy Lincoln one step closer to the Oval Office. Uh, surely logical men. Lieutenant Nurmack from the South, surely you would not be persuaded to leave your country, the traditions of, of Jefferson and Washington, uh, for, for such an idle argument, such a topical matter, not as states' rights. So you must understand that our people believe that their rights are being trampled upon. It does not matter what anybody else thinks is what they think. I myself am a union man, regardless. But I will tell you, they will fight. They will fight tooth and nail. Because they must. It is their life. And as far as uh, uh, people living in their country, uh, they Many people, even in the north, uh, they look more toward their states than they do the federal government. Well, that's very true. That's very true. The federal government has never, we've never had a strong central hand in the United States, but the Constitution is, is transient. The, the Republic adapts and changes with the times. Surely, older mechanisms uh, have also fallen away in the history of our great nation. Uh, surely a stronger federal government is necessary for things such as interacting with strong, hostile European powers such as the French and Spanish. They have strong monarchs and a strong central government, a central navy, a developed army. The English have their monarch and a strong military tradition to fall back on. There are some merits to centralized government, gentlemen. Our system is chaotic. We know this as military men. How often have we fallen short on ration and pay because the states have not met their obligations? to the federal army. This is a regular issue. 
There are some merits to the federal argument one would give. I understand and am sympathetic. I have spent much time in the South. I enjoy my Southern friends and neighbors. They are like brothers to me as fellow Americans. Surely, such an issue has a third option to war or secession. Can we not find a way to preserve union and states' rights? But you are dealing with people such as John Brown who is a madman. It does not matter. It is too bad that that man's rhetoric and his ghost did not go with him to his moldy old grave. So, I'm afraid it appears that even like calm gentlemen like us and old friends cannot find a, a simple solution to what is apparently a very complex issue. There's so much feeling in it. It's unfortunate. I would hesitate with great deliberation to raise arms, even under the call of honor and duty against my fellow countrymen and my friends, of course. This is a very trying proposition. I can only hope that the election goes in a manner, and that whoever is elected, Mr. Douglas or Mr. Lincoln, that whoever is elected is going to approach the matter with, with, with care and diligence. And I hope that all will see a cooler path. It seems that all of this talk of war is very heated and very rushed. I, I am just not comfortable with it. Uh, well, none of us want to want to see a war break out between the North and the South. Um, I know that strong feelings exist. Uh, even I've heard even at, uh, at West Point, uh, some of the cadets uh, have uh, the Southern sympathizers. The, the Southern cadets uh, have gotten into scuffles with the Southern Northern cadets and so forth. So, hey, John, I'm telling you that there will be war. That is unfortunate because I fear for a war amongst countrymen on this continent. We are a unique breed, gentlemen. Americans are unlike any people who have come before them. We are industrious. We are creative. We are dedicated and diligent and brave, hardworking, regardless of what side of some damn line you live on, be it north or south, all of the American people are hardworking, earnest, and unrelenting. The, the proposition of an army of Americans fighting another army of Americans. I do not mind telling you, gentlemen, I am no coward, but such a proposition gives me pause. I would not wish to fight an army of Americans because I fight with an army of Americans. I know what our army is capable of. I know what our men are capable of. The idea of fighting a similar army made of similar stock. Obviously, if the American army has prevailed again and again against the best that Europe can throw at us, twice the British have tried to take this continent back, twice we have refused them against the greatest army in the world. We have put down the savages and carved a new nation from the wilderness. Such a people are one that I would not wish to make war with. And the idea of two armies of Americans making war upon each other is a terrible prospect. It fills me with great dread.